In 2012, I first walked Davu Park and was amazed at the property and said, my goodness, why is there not a disc golf course here? And I never dreamed that I would be the one that got to design it almost a decade later. So it's been amazing. One and a half years ago, I had a chance meeting that led to the possibility of doing this and a lot of hard work made it possible. Well, welcome to Covington on a beautiful, warm Saturday morning in the fall, huh? All of you who volunteered, it's not possible with, without your engagement and your effort to turn this into a reality. This is a wonderful addition to the recreational opportunities that are available in the city of Covington and in Davu Park. Uh, we congratulate and thank all of you for helping to make this happen. Myself and the mayor and the rest of the board of commissioners, it wasn't a hard sell. You know, I was a kid that grew up in this city playing basketball and stickball on the street. And to see what this sport has and is going to be and is going to be here in our city is so, so exciting. Hello and welcome, Mike with Disc Golf Fan Life, bringing you exciting coverage of the 2022 Davu Park Disc Golf Course Grand Opening. Here in the great city of Covington, Kentucky, players will be battling to set the first course record, as well as playing a skins match where each hole is worth $100. First up, we have Dr. Ryan Freibert, course designer of Davu Park. Next, we have an all-time favorite local, Pete Caldwell. Then we have Matthew Blakely, one of our local pros. And last but not least, crowd favorite local, Zach Arlinghouse. All right, starting us off on hole one, par three, 262 feet. Joining me today is course designer, Dr. Ryan Freibert. What it do? And local pro, Matthew Blakely. Hello. So let's turn it over to Oz for our player introductions. First player on the tee pad. Y'all already know him, Ryan Freibart. Please welcome to the tee pad, the one who has made this day a reality, a true visionary with a goal to serve his passion for disc golf and bring that energy to his community. The one who has left more blood, sweat, and tears on this course more than anyone else, the one that has spent countless hours working with our open ear leaders to see how this golf offers so much for so many. Please welcome Ryan Fry Dr. Ryan Freiburg. Oz with really kind words here. I, I didn't get to hear him the first time around when we were live because I was focused on not hitting first available. I've got my flat top star skeeter here and just trying to hit the gap. Uh, he hit the gap, he did. I did have dreams of a hole-in-one. Didn't happen, but still happy with the outcome. 30 feet from the basket, looking at birdie. Let's give a big round of applause for the 2021 Longest Drive Pro Masters Champion and the 2022 Tim Selinski Pro Masters Champion, Pete Caldwell. He's been playing this game more than many of us have been alive. He has played in over, he has played in over 250 PDJ sanctioned events has won over 40 of them. He's a big supporter and leader within the Greater Cincinnati Disc Golf Association, always quick with a joke, and has not only designed and planted courses for our community, but has 
raised an army of Caldwells that dominate the local disc golf scene. Good luck to Pete. Let's go. Besides Pete, he also has his two sons, Calvin and Bradley, who are both be quickly becoming pros in the local area. He threw a nice, uh, I believe it is a T-bird up to the pin there, probably within about 10 feet. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome third to the tee pad, Mr. Matthew Blakely. This guy right here is one of our favorite representatives of the sport. A true professional both on and off the course with a rating of over 1,009, playing in over 350 events, racking up an amazing 64 wins, over 75 cane winnings, sponsored by Discraft and one of our favorite local retailers, Disc and Dat. Let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Matthew Blakely. Yeah, so Matthew is uh, brought here today at the behest of Dan Bayless, a uh, longtime sponsor of Matthew with Disc and Dat. Overall here, this is a one of the Discraft's newer discs, it's a passion. And as you can see, it flies really straight. Yeah, and right under the basket too. Does it do that every time? Our Does a pretty good job. Zach Arlinghouse, local hero Zach, sponsored by Discraft. Disc and Dat is your reigning 2019 Junior Disc Golf World Champion and is here to take all the old people's money. Zach is a uh, 1,005 player rating, has participated in almost 170 events with 20 career wins under his belt. He's a lefty, but we won't hold it against him just because he throws with the wrong hand. Let's give it up for this young man, the very talented Zach Arlinghouse. Zach Arlinghouse was recommended by the Natty to represent their team today. And uh, he's going to put Oz's foot squarely in his mouth with a righty forehand instead of a lefty backhand. Zach here has only been alive less than a time amount of time. No! He has been playing. And, and doing really well in that time, too. So at this point, you know, they're all parked under the basket. I'm back taking pictures with politicians, kissing babies, giving my parents hugs. Like, you know, there was a lot of emotion in today. And uh, I really wish that I was as close as all of them were. I got to make a putt now after all this. We little putted you. Not to mention, they're already in for two. We're playing for $100 a hole here on skins. This putt doesn't matter. Oh, but it does. We're playing for the course record today also. Yeah, and oh, just wide right. Not even a chance. Good height on it, good speed. But uh, I had crimped about 400 S brackets the day before, hanging all the T signs and next T signs, and man, my hand was tight. So with that put, we'll push hole one, lead us on to hole two. Now for $200. Par four, 352 feet. Ryan, go ahead and tell us a little bit about this hole. Yeah, so this hole was really, really tricky, but we found this little ridge going up the hill and we knew it was gonna be a tight, difficult hole. It feels like 600 feet looking up at it. It only measures at 350-ish, um, but man, it is so far uphill and the camera, you know, always makes things look a little bit more flat than what they actually are. This one, you feel like you throw a, a crushed mid-range or fairway, and sometimes it goes 200 feet, and uh, that's, that's throwing uphill for you. We can nickname this one Into the Darkness. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Bob. There is a little short access uh, utility line pathway about halfway up, and I believe that that's what Pete is looking for here. Pete has a rock in his hand, trying to place it there. Oh, and he pulled it a little right and comes up a little short. Yeah, so it looked like he, it looks like he's going to have a shot at the the alternative gap, uh, which is out to the right, big hyzer. Not the way this hole is designed, but it is a, a fairly reasonable way to play the hole. What do you have here, Blakely? I have the passion again, actually. Oh, the one that goes straight under the basket. The one that's supposed to stay straight. Yeah. Straight ball. And he's done well. Uh, left side of the fairway is good here. You, you want to be on the left side because the, the shot up to the basket is really, really sharp angle at the end. And so the more you are on the left, the better you have a chance at getting the disc back to the right on your second. 
Zach has thrown a forehand here. He was going for mm. as much as he could handle, and he just mm. let a little bit of the uh, uphill get to him, and the disc pushed a little bit further right, so he's going to be obstructed in the woods. I have Innova's new run of the Dark Rebel here. Looking to just throw something straight and flat. Prime position. All right, so here's Pete now. He's not quite in the position he wanted, but he's still looking to take the outside path. Well, he was looking to. Didn't quite make it. I feel like he would have had a better chance maybe if just flat-footed. He had a, a really tight, low ceiling right in front of him. And uh, I think trying to do a run-up through those vines is just ill-advised. So Zach has found rough on new course. Well, with most new courses, the rough is extremely rough. Oh. That did not sound good. Yeah, so really that should be out of bounds. It's not marked on the tee pad, so we'd let him we let him play from there. And this is a great position that I'm in, and I'm really pushing the ceiling on an Anheuser shot, and I nice nailed it and caught the very last available twig to knock it down to stop it becoming parked. But that's what you have to do on this hole to get it close on the second shot is push that ceiling, and that's that's why I designed it the way I did. So Pete is again experiencing the rough at its finest because it's still a brand new course and uh, he's got to work a little magic here to get kind of close to the basket. Yeah, looking like the old hook thumb here. And he's done well. Left himself an opportunity for a par. All right, I've got two gaps here. I've got the wide open left gap and then I've got a tight gap on the right. Um, playing for two hundred dollars here, and I go for the more direct line on the right. And I just brush cut that the day before, and uh, maybe I maybe I cut a little bit too much. Blakely with eighteen feet for birdie. Yeah. <laughs> Zach putting from afar. Gives it a good run though, just a little bit right and short, but he'll be a. Uh, having a tap in for par there. Prime for the three. Little little foliage, but I don't think the foliage would have changed that. That was wide right again. Pete with a little low. Blakely here for the birdie and the skin. drains it no question I must say this that putt was for two hundred dollars and it was still early in a match and I uh, definitely felt a little bit of nerves on it but I was able to capitalize and Zach is in for par Pete with his patented turbo tap in for a bogey and I had 15 feet or so for and was able to find the chains this time. And after Dr. Ryan Freibert cleans up, Matthew pulling ahead with the $200 skins, leading us to hole three, par three, 295 feet. So plays 266 uh, by as the crow flies, but throws like it's about mm, 160, super downhill down behind the Bandshell Auditorium where they have concerts here at Davu Park. Uh, this hole has a high gap and a low gap, and I think Blakely is gonna take the low gap here, yeah. Playing for the skip, and he unfortunately catches just a little bit of the shul, but fortunately rolls out to about 10 feet looking at another birdie. So now we're gonna see Zach though with his left hand I think he might have a zone in his hand. I'm not 100% sure here. Yeah, certainly looks it. Nice skip for Arlinghouse. Tap in range for birdie. This hole's pushing, ladies and gentlemen, unless somebody can pull off something miraculous. 
I've got a Berg. I like to go for the high gap here. The Berg you have to like absolutely smash to get it to even go remotely past the basket. I've pulled it a little left. Sneaks through, rolls up to about 12 feet for birdie. So Pete, who normally plays righty here, has decided to throw lefty. And really he's done well. Excellent form, full follow through, great shot. Just a, glides a little bit past the basket. He's got 30, 35 feet for birdie here back up the hill. That's, that's a great putt. What you can't tell is that's probably at least 45 degrees of angle going up that hill and uh, not easy to make. Arlinghausen for two to push this, the hole. And we're just going around the horn here. Blakely in for two. And I'll ring up a birdie putt finally. Star frame for us there. Push that hole. And now we'll play for another $200. Hole four, par four, 462 feet. And this one is uphill, probably 25 feet in total. Uh, very, very tight low gap off of the tee. There's also a big high Anheuser gap that allows you to cheat that first gap at the expense of a little bit of distance. This really sets up to leave most players around 180 feet up shot to the basket. I will say if you take note to all those trees out there, they're gonna be a problem catching a flight path of these did. Yeah, and, and the th players here really did not do the film crew any favors with our shots. So I step up to the tee first and I think, man, I really need to crush this to try to get a look and try to win a skin here. I figure it's definitely gonna be pushed with a multiple threes. Yeah, and it is it is kind of a tweener hole. Um, there's certainly an opportunity for a two with a perfect drive, but it still is you know a 60, 70 foot putt at best. So Blakely has caught the right trees here, went a little aggressive and just overturned it. Maybe a, maybe a slight grip lock, but I don't think it was that bad. Arling House going with the righty forehand. Hulk smash murdered. right down the middle. Yeah, I commentated it well there. Murdered. I believe he caught the very last pine tree uh, in the middle of the fairway. Now I'm going the big Anheuser gap here and really just was trying to smash it and just I grip locked it. Blakely just overturned his. I grip locked it. First available tree. I'm not sure what position I'm in here, but I'm not happy with it. Again, distance is kind of a premium here a little bit because it is uphill. There is a tunnel of trees here, so you want to get out, out of them to make that next shot easier. And uh, it, it, it's definitely trees to hit, though. Yeah, it's a tight gap. I mean, it's probably a 15-foot gap at about 180 feet uphill. So I've got my flat top star skeeter here, flat footed, patent pending, and just ripping on it. And it, it was going to be so good, but it caught just one little branch right at the very end, knocked it down. I was at least going to have myself a look for three. So here I'm down on one knee in the stuff, trying to get a little distance with the sidearm. As you can hear, I'm rooting for it to get up there, but cut, catch the last tree on that side. And Pete's on the river here. Gives himself a great shot for three. And this is truly just jail. Arlinghouse throws a tremendous drive off of the tee, ends up directly behind a giant pine. He's looking high, he's looking wide, and he just smashes a forehand overhand. Yeah, I caught my catch cam off guard. He plinkos down the tree right near the basket. Yeah, he actually caught almost a roller. I don't know how the disc was able to maintain stability, but it went straight up and straight down, landed on edge, and rolled to about 20 feet. 
So here I was actually thinking give it a run, and as you can see, that is far, far Don't from that. that. Don't do that. And Blakely with advice, as he is always apt to give. As you can see, Ryan threw a better shot than me there, and he put himself up there in range to... I was trying to run it, too. I, you can see the disappointment in my face. I was trying to put that in. Blakely with putt for par. All right, at least did something right on this hole. Yeah, that's got to. I mean, that's got to feel good in a skins match, though. Hole four, and you make a 65 footer for par. Zach for three, dead center. So now we're all rooting for Pete. I'm putting for par at this point, so we need Pete to make his 15-footer, which we've seen earlier in the round. He missed one about that distance, so maybe a little nerves on this. This is to keep $200 alive for the whole group. And there it is. In for birdie three, and we're on to hole five. Yeah, fun dynamic playing for skins and for the course record at the same time. That hole pushed over, now playing for 300, hole five, par three, 265 feet. So yeah, this one, you really have to throw the right distance. If you run this basket, you're gonna end up 25, 35 feet past it. And off the tee, you choose your gap. You either throw the left gap, hysering back, or the inside gap. Zach is no doubt throwing a zone here, lefty backhand. Skipping up, he's probably got about 25, 30 feet for birdie. So Pete's up next here. Um, Pete has been known to throw rocks a lot. Um, I'm assuming this is rock in his hand, but he is also throwing lefty, so maybe it isn't. Ooh. So it looked great from the tee. It was, it was really pretty long. So I'm, I'm choosing to throw a sidearm here also. I'm throwing a buzz OS. Uh, just trying to keep it low and skip it up to it. Yeah, the, the left gap is definitely the easiest gap. Um, I do throw the righty backhand quite a bit. I believe there was a little bit of a headwind here this morning. Blakely's thrown well to get it just past the basket. Now I've got my Firefly, which is a fairly stable flight disc, but will turn over. In this headwind, I'm just trying to hyzer flip it a little bit. Baby. Baby. Oh. Wow. Gave that one a nice run. Yeah, it looked great from the, the tee pad. And yeah, no, no, no surprise. It was very close to the chains there. I thought at the least it would slide the left side chain. Yeah, right. Something. Even better because it just sat under in some ways. Yeah, right. But the ace would be better. But yeah, no, I would definitely take the ace. Enjoying a little friendly banner on the way to the hole there. Uh, it really was a good looking shot. Pete from deep and almost puts it in. <laughs> Ryan with the ace run now has a little bit of work left coming back up the hill. This is uh, more uphill than it probably seems. Yeah, I think I was just a little aggressive. I was feeling a little angry after hole four and really gave that a good bid. And th the wind here on this course, there are so many little valleys and troughs and tree lines that the wind will swirl all over the place. So I caught a little headwind there. The wind had switched from a headwind off the tee to a headwind coming back up. Just kept the bat disc a little bit high out of the basket. Blakely for 28 feet for birdie. No doubt, dead center. So I made that putt now, so Zach has to make his to push $300. Otherwise, we have the opportunity to win $300 here. I feel like every year my putt changes, and 
I've been playing disc golf since 2006. I've played disc golf with Blakely since 2006, or at least seen him. I don't think it's ever his putt has ever changed. Zach puts it in, pushes the hole. Thank goodness. Doing a little course maintenance. Never seems to end. Just a couple cleanup putts here. And that hole gets pushed over, turning hole six into a $400 hole. Hole six coming in at a par three, 298 feet. So this hole was used in the Course Challenge Series in 2009 at the Temp Course here. And this is a left to right shot that requires a really, really great amount of angle control and distance control down this slope. Zach Arlinghouse is going to be teeing off first and going out wide here. Zach also keeps his shot really low. Zach has done well here to control the height and the angle and kept it low along the ground, skipping basket. Up next was uh, myself here, throwing a buzz OS, uh, trying to keep it hot, take it high up over the path kind of control my distance left to right. I was really focused on that. And overall, uh, come in a little short here and uh, left myself uh, some work. Uh, let's see what Pete does here. Just catches the very last inside tree on that gap and knocks it down a little bit short. I have elected to go with the Berg forehand trying to get it high up in the air and just let it fall. And unfortunately, the headwind has caught mine and just taken it right down to the ground. So from here, I'm looking at trying to make this and uh, trying to throw a little cheeky overhand shot. And I just was a little bit right, gave it a decent run. I've since found out that that disc is just a little bit too stable for that shot. Blakely with a slightly obstructed look, but definitely a putt. Oof, just past the chains. I must say, out of the hand, I thought it was in. Yeah, it looked like it, for sure. And Pete down the hill with his swirl that's missing a few grams of plastic on it. Pete. That was a must make for Pete to push this hole over. I mean, unless some miracle happens here with Zach, but he seems like he's only like 12 feet, 15 feet. I'm not touching. It didn't really matter. Zach has put it in for birdie and taken, taken the skins down. So current total is Blakely with two skins and Arlinghouse with three. Four. Blakely's in for par. Uh, sorry, the booth has come down. I uh, stand corrected. Four skins. For, uh, I know. You're right. Score don't matter. Make it what? You're right. All right, with that $400 skin, that'll reset us for hole seven, par three, 328 feet. So this one was not supposed to be where it is. Uh, we actually had the T set about. 80 feet to the right of this tunnel and uh, after some trimming was done we lost the the angle and uh, just on a happenstance a tree fell down right here and we walked over to check it out and said oh look at this perfect tunnel shot so Zach's throwing a zone I believe trying to turn it over and just doesn't quite get the angle on it to get it towards the basket this is a big downhill shot um, you're throwing into a green that's sloped from left to right there's a road OB that's right it's a really fun but intimidating shot I will admit that this one probably sets up a little better for the 
not to Zach's advantage here. Yeah, that was something in the design that I really struggled with is trying to make sure that everything felt neutral. And I didn't want it to be a bunch of straight shots, uh, but I wanted to give people the opportunity to work right to left or left to right and still have a, a chance. Pete's left that one just a little bit right. That's a tough putt up that hill to the basket. I've got my Mako 3 here, which I've aced the pin location a couple of times and just don't trust the angle on this and thought that it would turn into the headwind and just stayed hyzer the whole way into the trees. So Zach's at the bottom of the hill here. This is probably 20, 25 feet up the hill. Gives it a bid and just a little bit short and right. Shout out to my dad here. I tell you, the old man, he loves the game of disc golf and caddies for me any chance he gets. I unfortunately don't do, don't do us any honors on that putt, but still, Pete, in, still in a good range for par. Pete's got an uphill putt here. Ooh, just pulls it. I mean, that went around the chains. He's disappointed, I'm disappointed. Left it wide open for Matt to take the skin. Everybody here is disappointed except myself. Yeah, so Blakely's licking his chops here. Eight feet for a birdie and certain skin. I'm still just practicing on finding the chains at this point. Good part, Ryan. Okay. Sure. I'm back to I don't even know where you're at. <laughs> I'm like same distance the other side. And Blakely's in for a two. That takes another $100 skin off the board. So now currently, Zach has $400 worth of skin money, and Blakely has $300 worth of skin money. Now we move on to hole eight. <laughs> Pete was disgusted with that, obviously. Didn't even, didn't even turbo putt that. Hole 8, the island hole, coming in at a par 3, 234 feet. Island green here. We wanted to do some hardscape rock and trench and a moat with dragons, but we ended up deciding to go for a Kentucky board fence. The price on dragons was just absurd. Inflation, I tell you. Uh, but this, this island is uh, 50 feet deep, 60 feet wide. And uh, I was hoping it would create the illusion of being able to actually see the back of the island from the tee to give it some depth. Right now, it looks like it's all about the same height. So I threw a Malta there and just played up here highs the whole way, put it quite close. Yeah, it was a great shot. At this distance, the island feels massive, but there are people that miss it. Zach's put this to about 15 feet, looking for birdie. Pretty much two people in the island. Any two people, and this one feels like a push, unless unless that one of the two is me, in which case all bets are off. Now we got Pete here. I'm sure it's a rock, probably. I think he may have actually gone T-bird here. Oh. I'm trying to throw the wide hyzer and almost puts it a little long. The two openings at the front and the back are sneaky, as, as is a lot of the obstacles here. I've got a Prodigy M1 here, disc that I really trust to only go about as far as this island is, and fluffed it a little bit, but still within the island, probably about 32 feet. Ryan and seems to have dialed it in now. Made a putt, ladies and gentlemen, watch out. Yeah, it was a T-bird that Pete threw. So he was quite close to the back, actually. But he was inside the circle. So we are planning on putting a couple of rocks at the back of the opening there. That's where the drop zone is for any of those nice, of souls that are unfortunate enough to miss the island on this hole. So there's two people in for birdie already, so the hole is pushed money-wise. 
Let's see if the rest can clean it up for a star frame. Zach in for another two. And Blakely, this is all but in the bucket. Oh. I spoke too soon. I, I might have pulled that a touch right. I it's, forgot it, about it wasn't that. much right if it was. That cut a lot of chains. It was a lot of change. Let me tell you. All right, hole eight pushed over to hole nine. Now playing for two hundred dollars. Par three, three hundred and forty-six feet. So originally, this basket was going to be tucked around to the left, right here in that little grove of trees. And we started looking at the. It, this was all honeysuckle, brush, thistle behind here. And uh, once we figured out that that's all it was, we asked the parks department to come in and mow that. And uh, it turned into a beautiful downhill hole. It gave us a little bit of distance. So this one actually can be a little deceiving. You kind of look at it from the tee and you see these trees and you just think, just sneak in there. Well, actually it's probably another 60, 80 feet past those trees. So you need it to kind of carry a little bit there. So I again have my Mako 3 here and really just try to rip this thing flat. And it's dead on line. Skips past to about 10 feet. I feel great about that one. So right here you can see me deciding between two discs. I have the passion and a buzz in my hand. Um, this one you probably can go long if, you, if you're not careful. So I decided to put the passion down and I decided to just go with the buzz. I think the other thing here too is that you really want to throw something that's a little lower speed and going to check on this green. The way that this thing is sloped, if you come in with right to left hyzer and have a fast disc, it's very easy to catch an edge and just scoot down the hill. And there's about 80 to 90 feet to the right where it's just wide open down this slope. Pete with a long look for birdie, leaves it a little bit short, but he's safely in for par. Now, Zach here is just absolute jail. And I know he looked at about 10 different shots here, trying to find something that gives him an angle towards the hole. Finally elects to just right-handed turbo putt for a lefty. I don't know how he arrived at that decision, but not bad. Cleans up for a par. This one is probably only 20 feet, not too far, downhill. Kind of need to secure this putt to kind of make sure it, the hole pushes because Ryan's quite close. Yeah, I was banking on a skin at this point, and then Blakely throws a great shot and steals it from me. So that's right. okay. I haven't. I don't feel like I've deserved any skins to this point. Yep, Ryan is making his putts now, so no no skin was had. And then Pete, as we said, tapped in for a par. Pete's so used to singles play, he seems to not be as aggressive as what maybe he could be during the skins match here. And on to hole 10, where $300, par 3, 226 feet. So this one... Originally that uh, hackberry, the tree was grown completely across the fairway. And uh, so I used a pole saw, trimmed it up and created a really n a, a nice little arch that you have to throw under here. Um, it is sloped severely right to left at the basket, but you really want to hit up on top of the slope. Otherwise you can get a little ground play. I've gotten lucky here. I hit on the hillside, but was still able to stay within about 12 feet of the basket. Now this one's uphill, so if we're going to go for an ace, this is one of the better ones. I'm a choosing to just try to put it there. I'm throwing a, a challenger and just throwing it hard, kind of with the ceiling, and trying to just throw it right at it. Again, just a little short, a little low, not far. But an easy uphill look for birdie. Now Zach's deciding between right hand forehand and left hand backhand. He's elected to go with the righty forehand here. Any idea what he's throwing here? Yeah, so he decided to throw a raptor here, and all along he says, I'm going to go for an ace. I'm going to ace this. And he doesn't even give it above, get it above the basket. Yeah, it looked like he was laying up to me, too. 
Yeah. Pete. Probably a rock. Yeah, I would guess so. <laughs> Turned it a little early, it looks like. Looks like his flippy rock. Blakely up the hill for birdie. Probably only about 20 feet. What I didn't realize was uh, Pete was probably further out at that point. I wasn't paying attention. And I think he was having trouble finding his disc, too. So no harm, no foul. Pete for birdie. Yeah. There he we puts go. Puts it in. Pushes the hole. So, yeah, two, two twos are ready. No money being had here. I'm still just trying to find the chains. Try to keep the last two putts that have gone in for me. Same feel. There we go. In for another two. Trying to stop the and then Zach with his perfect layup. Yeah, he, he, could he couldn't have dropped it under the basket any better. And yet another push onto hole 11, now worth $400. Coming in as a par three, 310 feet. So this is another downhill, low ceiling shot. Trouble left, trouble right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. Uh, you really have to distance control this shot and choose your gap because you can go outside right with the right-handed backhand or you can try to hyzer flip something straight. Uh, but this is a, a sneakily hard shot. I've got my firefly again here. Overall, it looked like Ryan kept it a little too straight, and he found the uh, pine tree there on the right. Let alone, let alone hands. Was it an easy one? Did that was going to happen? So here I am. I'm grabbing the Bozo ass again. Uh, I must say, I love this thing's sidearm, and I'm just going to try to turn it a little bit and try to very just a very slight S shot. Yeah, the forehand really does play well into this green, sloped from right to left. I really like this drive. Good. Oh, good. Oh, good. It caught something there late, last tree ceiling that I could hit, hit and slowed me down a little. Yeah, I think it caught a little bit of a headwind, as I recall, and it just raised it up. I mean, six, eight inches too much, and still with a fine result. A look for birdie. Zach has a buzz, I believe, here, and looking for the same shot, little S curve. This looks so good. Oh, good. Right off the front of the cage. I mean, a couple that was inches great. higher, and that's that ace and skins money. Yeah. I mean, that was a perfect shot, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it was so pure from the tee. I'm not sure what Pete has here. A rock, I believe. Oh, yeah, he hyzer flipped that. He also flipped shoulder. a little right. I don't have too much. I can give Zach credit for an ace run at least this time. So this is a, a thumber. A lot of people say that a thumber is a different shot. but I love, love that shot. It's uh, basically a forehand, but comes out with really low spin. So it's really easy on little glidey up shots to, to not overcook it. Pete with an obstructed long look at two. Ooh, hit oh, hit the pole, goodness. gets a little roll. That's how he Not got there. friendly. No. All right, so Zach is right against the, the cage, so if we're going to push skins, I need to make this. No doubt. All right. No doubt. Dead center. One thing people might not know is that uh, Dr. Freeber here is, is a doctor and knows all the shots. Uh, very few people throw as many different varieties of rollers, thumbers, tomahawks, sidearms as what Ryan does. Yeah, I, I know too much. It gets me into a lot of trouble. But I've done well to save par on that from where I was. Everybody waiting on Pete to come down and clean up his putt. Yeah. He did have the unfortunate little roll away. I think he thought he was parked, so I don't think he was in bit much, much of a hurry. See, he's walking directly to the basket and then finds out that his disc is 20 feet down to the right. That was a really unfortunate roll away. My goodness, that was far. 
again, at all points in this course, there's pretty much elevation on almost every green. So rolls are possible. You know, we really didn't see that many big, big rollaways. Uh, I think that may have been one of the worst ones we had. With that nice putt from Matt, he pushes the hole. Now hole 12 is worth $500. It's a par three, straight down the middle, 256 feet. Plays like 400. I mean, this one is tight. So this was actually the hole that made the design at Davu possible. Um, the difficulty with a disc golf course is you, you have to have a circuit and we had an incomplete circuit and we found, this is an old farm road, I believe, that we found on this hillside. Lakely has pushed this one a little bit left. But this was all honeysuckle. You can see all the debris that's on the ground here. This is the material that the machine, shout out to the FECON, uh, this machine does, I mean, a week's worth of work and hours um, when it comes to clearing honeysuckle and it has pretty much garnered the entire down to it. Oh, it looked like Zach just pured that straight down the yeah, tunnel. What a shot. Righty forehand, down the gap, misses the last tree. He's got 18 feet for par. I've got my flat top star skeeter and have absolutely pured it. And catch the very last tree and then kick dead left into the junk. So Pete here with uh, Zach being close. Uh, I think we're starting to root him on here because we would like to see the hole pushed. So we're counting on Pete to throw a good shot. And it looks like it's just caught the trees. Arling House in prime position to take the skin, currently worth $500. Uh, Pete's got a long patent pending stance here from looks like about 100 feet. I'm sure he's going to give this a run. He knows the position that Arling House is in. Pete had one oh, weird little right. hunt like plant in his way that kind of really gave him fits there. Now, very close to him is myself, Matt, and I need to throw this in if I want to push the hole. It's looking good. It's looking oh, oh it just hyzers out. So at this point, I, I don't I don't know where my disc is. I know that I've just caught this tree, and I thought it had kicked down just to the left off the fairway. It turns out that I am in the depths of hell, and absolutely no chance at anything. I believe there's a throw that takes place sometime in this moment that we are sitting here looking at this yeah i was trying to get a good shot of this one but it just wasn't working out you you throw it here in a second hit some trees uh, we'll see you move forward a bit right now so again the rough here because it's a brand new course it's quite rough and by design at least on this hole there is a road down off the hillside i give this a a, a chance at a Par, but come up short. All right, so Zach here, pretty routine putt, five hundred dollars on the line. Goodbye, money. No. So, a putt worth five hundred dollars. You can't call it routine because it is worth so much. Yep. Probably felt the pressure on that one. I mean, he putted it with good speed, good force, gave it a chance, just a touch high off the band. I'm in for bogey, obviously, and visibly pissed off. Everybody else is in for par. Not only for $500, we got the camera crew out there and, and got quite a bit of a crowd following you guys. That one hurt a little. Hey, Pete. Pete. Oh, I people are found this one. Yeah, they're already found one. An unfortunate missed putt by Zach Arlinghouse. Well, depending on who you're asking, I guess. Now on to hole 13, worth $600, par 4, 312 feet. So shout out to pretty much every single volunteer that has even put a minute of time into Davu at this point because 
this hole was almost entirely done by the volunteers and what what a tremendous hole extremely challenging uphill left to right swale in the middle Blakely has grip locked a shot no we call that the local route yeah lo okay that's the new local route uh, I don't know how in the world he made it all the way through do you have any comments um, Greece uh, luck uh, but yeah, if we're gonna talk about this hole, it's a par four, but you know, I would always lay this up in stroke play. Yeah, in tournament play, absolutely. You're throwing to the top of the hill, and then you're throwing your up shot and taking your three and moving on. This is worth you can some money. That shot, so you, since it's six hundred dollars and I got through, now everybody else has to be aggressive because they want a chance at that six hundred dollars. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think there's anybody here that's happy with your shot except for you. Pete trying to turn it, doesn't quite turn it, but does put himself in a great position for second shot. So now we got the course designer here. Yeah, and, and I've, I've thrown this one a few times. I've, I've had one good chance at it. I throw a halo here. beast here and just oh, smoke the gap and catch some tree that decided to grow somewhere between when I released the disc and when it got to it. Kicks it off to the right. Zach with a hard sidearm hits, gets knocked down pretty early still. I mean, it's really a good thing that that disc hits something. Otherwise, I think he was going to end up by the Rotary Grove Memorial. Pete throwing a hyzer. Right at the cameraman. Cameraman's got to do a little dance. Shout out to Chuck Pinnock for getting out there helping us with the uh, cameras. Mm -hmm. My goodness, he's he's only on one leg for the rest of the round, folks. Give him a bit of a break here. All right, so now Ryan, after that what looked to be a great drive, got the last tree kicked down into the, into the rough here, though. Again, he's probably thinking make this, though, if it's possible. I've got a gap. I mean, I've got a gap, and I... Oh, just a little short. Through the berg, a little forehand. Had to kind of almost air bounce it, but uh, I thought it thought it had a chance out of the hand, but as soon as it turned into a berg, it just fell out of the sky like they do. So this is a par four technically, so Zach's still going for birdie. Oh my goodness. And we're going to have to run that one back. That was a great throw in. Catch it from a uh, different angle here. Just clean and smooth, man. Guess even even though it's not for the skin, it's for the first record still playing, folks. Actually, too. So it's a great shot. Yeah, when you talk about a birdie, I mean that's that is a hell of a birdie. Yeah, not often do you hit two trees on two different shots and still yes. come out with the birdie. So now Blakely, I left that yellow stake there for a reason. This was it, folks. Oh, I can't tell you. You thought Zach was disappointed missing a $500 putt. How does it feel missing a $600 putt? It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. That felt quite routine and just no reason to be short on a putt of that magnitude. And I believe I just told Blakely he deserved that miss. Oh, Pete hit the band. Some people claim that's the worst sound there is. Oh, whoo. Now with back-to-back -back missed putts, we push again. Now to hole 14 worth $700, par 3, 272 feet. So the drone is flying the kind of preferred gap, which is a high hyzer, right hand, backhand, up through the trees. There's also a low gap that I don't think anybody here took. And then there's also a left to right gap. So Blakely is electing to go with the high gap hyzer and just pushes it a little inside, catches some trees, again, channels his inner Cyrus and rolls it up to about 12 feet for birdie. So one thing I can say from 
practice in this court the hold the day before is that it's easy to throw long here actually too yeah for sure zach decides to throw it into the sun uh, lost the disc and came down in the woods behind the basket. He pulled it quite a bit left and it just never really had a chance to get back to the fairway, I hate to say it. Yeah, I've got a Thunderbird here going for that high gap. Again, a little adrenaline now with the uh, amount of money on the line. Pured it, looks so good, looks so good, just happened to go a touch long. Yeah, absolutely cooked. Looking at about 35 feet for birdie. Pete's going for the big right hand backhand. Hazard Pete. gap. He's swinging a little harder. Sneaks into the edge of the woods. All right, now we see Zach in the woods there. There's like one gap it looks like. If he can pure it, oh, but it catches the last tree. He was trying to make it, he though. He still didn't really get credit. out all the way, either. He still didn't really get out all the way, either. No, it's still him. Some people say those are the most dreaded words in disc golf. You're still out. He just walks up casually, takes a look at it. Little stepper, dead center. Just so good, man. It's great to see this kid growing up. I mean, he, he has really become a absolute force in the, in the region, and it's great to see him out doing stuff on the Pro Tour as well. What was the youngest at Worlds? Yeah. Ooh, the Dr. Freebert. Dead center, but short. All right, so Pete here, not quite 100% clean. Looking like he's getting down to one knee. This is worth a lot of money. This hole's worth $700. And uh, it, Blakely is about 15 feet there from the looks of it, so this is a must to make. Ooh, hands it. And he did. I, I cannot lie. I thought that uh, he might miss that one and I might be a few hundred dollars richer, but alas, Pete made it and made the rest of the group's day there. And uh, Yeah, it's really interesting how, you know, in stroke play and skins play, you can go for cheering against somebody to cheering for them just hole by hole. We were all just ecstatic that Pete made that putt. Well, most of the group. All right, now hole 15. Second longest hole on the course, coming in par four, 522 feet, and worth the most, $800. Yeah, so this one, the inside gap is almost impossible to hit out of the air. You really have to go out wide to the right and uh, try to skip something into this little kind of alleyway that gives you an angle to approach this basket on your second shot. It is one of the few holes on the course that feels like you can really open up on a drive. Um, but again, sneaky. It's not the case. You gotta, you gotta be the right distance on this one. So be, besides the distance, you might want to watch your height. So I threw an Athena on a pretty good line there, but got it high and uh, caught the limbs there. Yeah, high and inside is not bad, but high and outside is definitely going to catch that tree on the right and uh, knock it down. You either have to go low or inside. I believe Pete has his uh, star strike that's pretty stable. And he's put it on a hyzer line, flips to flat, high and inside this time, and that's, that's going to end up in great position. All right. So now we have the lefty coming up next, and this, this is a little different shape here for him. Yeah, and I mean, I think this is definitely the the only chance that there really is for a two on this hole is a left hand backhand roller. Um, I tried to throw a cut roller the other day, and it's it's there, but I mean, it has to be perfect. And Zach has done well, but catches the inside tree and stops it. I have a. Uh, Excalibur here, just throwing it flat and low and just letting the disc do the work. Big skip at the end, and that's in prime position to attack this basket. Blakely has good angle, but is uh, quite far away having hit those tree branches. I also had quite a ceiling, low ceiling to kind of work with, so I chose to go kind of 
mid-range there and uh, didn't quite throw it hard enough and it, highs, and it caught the last trees here and went in left. Yeah, and I tell you what, this stuff on the left, if you're in this, God bless you. I don't even know what line Zach was looking at, but... I, and to be honest with you, he's only played the course once or play, thrown the layout once before this. He had to come up with that on the fly and he just absolutely pured it apart for birdie. And there's Dr. Freebird. Throwing a nice approach, putting it about 20 feet. Pete, ooh, pulls it a little bit. All right, now the rough is rough here, so I'm in jail. Trying to give it a chance. This area that we're, that's to the left of the hole is a reforestation area and we were not allowed to touch that in the course design so that's the reason why it is so thick and why it will remain thick so word of advice just don't go there and Pete's almost gone out of bounds but recovers well he'll have a putt for a par I've got a get a little honeysuckle between the legs sometimes that's what you got to do in disc golf so this is an to push eight hundred dollars little straddle putt i used to straddle putt exclusively so really that wasn't very uncomfortable for me in the honeysuckle it felt good between my legs so felt real natural yeah it did yeah. it did <laughs> so pete here patented little turbo he likes to do from close range sometimes it looked like he lost his balance a little bit there i was concerned for his safety for a brief moment but well, when you do get his age, you could break a hip. Yeah, that's possible. Luckily, we had a doctor in the group. Yeah, Zach in for birdie. That pushes the hole. We knew he wasn't going to miss that one. On to hole 16. Well, I guess I still got to clean up since we're playing stroke play. Well, oh, didn't clean up yet. I don't remember that happening either. No, I do. Well, there, there's video proof of it, so. Moving on to hole 16. The shortest hole, but now worth the most, $900, par 3. This is another one where you really have to throw the distance. If you run this basket at basket level when it gets there, goodbye, Miss Sunshine. It is absolute darkness straight down the hill into the woods. So is this your firefly again? Yeah, firefly again. Just throw it straight and try to get it the right distance. Catches the hill, checks up perfect. Ryan threw that at a very controlled height, pretty low to start with, and then it did not skip too far by it. And Zach has his zone here, I believe, again. And he's, he's left it low, but it's fine. It's 25 feet short, which is definitely the way to be here. I've had a couple of times where I've ended up 100 feet, 120 feet down that hill, and it, it is just brutal to get down there. Pete with the one-stepper. Yeah. A little glidey, but it's gonna check up just fine. Yeah, not too far. This is one of those trap holes where it feels like it's a must-get, but it's a must-get with some level of reservation. Yeah, I'm just completely trying to throw the right distance like you said here and I pulled a little right but yeah that's fine catches the tree sits down you've got 25 feet Whew. Zach with a little jump putt from about 38 dead center he looks really comfortable throwing that putt his putts do seem to be going in currently Pete's probably about 30 feet going uphill. Yeah, so we're all thinking pretty much just going around the horn, putting this out. Oh, oh off the front of the basket. Short. So Zach's the only one in with the two now currently. So uh, Pete will drop in for par there. Pete's got his three, so this hole's worth $800. I have to straddle. $900. <laughs> Wow, nine hundred dollars on a disc golf hole. One putt. One putt. Blakely lining up the straddle. 
off the chains and skips about the same distance away. Are, are you guys about to give this to Zach? Those dreaded three words, it's still you. Yeah, something has happened with my putting here. I've definitely started to miss way more than I like. Um, Back to the comfort, though. Stagger stance. Just reach for it and put it in. <sighs> High left. Overall. So, yeah, that's a four, folks. Um, you can't take uh, any putt for granted and got to see them through. And I can tell you, this looks like a 10-foot tap-in putt. It feels like it's about 35 with a headwind. And truly, it was probably about 18, maybe 20. But thankfully, the doctor has uh, found his putting stroke a little bit and uh, pushed the hole for us. After two missed what seemed to have been birdie putts, lucky to have pushed that over to hole 17, now worth $1,000, Par three, 264 feet. So this is a must get. I mean, no questions asked. You've got a backstop. You have a chance here for a miraculous shot to go for the ace because you, there's pretty much no penalty in running this one. And again, this is perfect design, at least in my eye, being the designer, because you want the opportunity for a heroic shot when it's down to the wire. Zach Arlinghouse with the left spike. At, at, I mean, just dead center. Put, puts it three foot. Nobody's even thinking about a putt there. Yeah, and everybody here is really thinking ace. If 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 you want to get the skin, we we all expect each other to come out with a two here. I've got my firefly again. Throwing just, this thing so well. Oh gosh, boy, that looked closer than it did, and as I remember it, but right over the basket. I would assume Pete's going to throw a rock here. Going for the low gap. Heiser's it out a little bit, but oh, he's got 20 feet. That's another thing. That, that little tree right in the middle of the fairway, you can either go to the right of it or you go to the left of it, or you go over top of it, but really all shots go here, but it's still difficult because you have to hit one of the gaps. Blakely has thrown his patented grip lock into the woods and somehow parked the hole. I wouldn't quite call it a grip lock. Maybe a little right. No, you were, you, were, you were going for that. You were going for the, the hyzer shot, and uh, it worked out. Pete, no problems here. 25 feet, dead center. Pete secures the two. We see Zach's already like uh, three foot from the pin. Yeah, sure so, he did. Multiple twos there. So we're going to have a big money hole coming up next. $1,100 on, on hole 18. It's all come down to this. Well, here we are after that star frame, pushing yet again, now onto hole 18, worth $1,100 on arguably the hardest hole of the course, par four, 547 feet. Yeah, without a doubt, the tee shot here requires a perfect line, perfect distance. There are two landing areas that you're trying to hit, and then you're left with 250, 270 feet straight up a hill to a basket that is on the edge of a hill and has tremendous roll away potential. I've got my Thunderbird here. This shot really demands multiple good shots if you want to get a birdie. Yeah, you have to throw two, I mean, great shots to have a look at two. So Ryan caught some of the last trees on the left before getting out to the opening. Really, really unhappy with that. This Zach with the lefty heat. Oh, still going. Still going. Flip. Still good. And it clipped the last tree, but I wouldn't even call it a clip. I'd call it a kiss because yeah. it just put it in perfect position. Absolutely perfect. Right on the ridge. He's got 260 feet up the hill. Pete trying to put it in placement. $1,100 on the line. Oh, it hits the last tree also. It's an easy miss here. That left tree. So Zach's in prime position, perfect position. Ryan and Pete are out of position here. 
At this point, we're all like on our knees praying that Blakely hits the line here and puts this in a scoring position. And he does, right down the middle. Heisering out a little bit short, but again, into one of the two areas that you're trying to land to have a shot at attacking the screen. So we gotta go way uphill. He's got a, Pete's got a very awkward stance here. No chance at a birdie anymore. Um, just gotta try to save his par. Yeah, standstill, obstructed, backhand shot. He's put himself into the fairway. I've got a similar chance, but a little bit more rotation. And I smashed my pro strike, Heiser flip. Got all the way up, almost to the end of the shul and uh, have left myself with about 70 feet up the hill. All right, unfortunately, Zach was a little too quick for me there, and we weren't able to get his upshot, but he came out on the rough uh, to the side of the basket there. He hit, he hit this tree branch right in front of the, right in front of the basket yeah, and so, fell down right there. Yeah, so with those shots, Blakely and Arlinghouse both have about 40-foot looks for birdie. Pete and I are both trying to throw in just because there's no guarantee that they make those putts. Pete has unfortunately caught a tree. So yeah, so this is coming down the wire, $1,100. Ryan's gonna be trying to give this a chance. Ooh. And I did, but just a little bit left. Pete, sidearm flick. Oh, good, good try. Puts it close. Outside in case All I right. fall forward, it is dark. No, I think you're outside. Yeah, you're out. You're out. Zach's outside the circle here. He's got some branches above him. His right leg's in the sticker right here a little bit. Yeah, from, from this position, it looks like he's got plenty of room, but really I remember this being a low ceiling, and yeah, he just puts it a little high, falls into the sh brush. All right, so this one, 35 feet uphill, quite severely uphill, little headwind. And <sighs> I told myself, don't leave it short. I had to give me the stuff. Three I said it might. I thought a three might win this hole. Yeah, it would have. Oh, my bad. Man, that's, some, that's rude. <laughs> oh, that's. Oh. DTP throw off. So we, we, as a group, walked along this ridge and found a spot towards hole one's basket that would give everybody a reasonable opportunity to throw. I think what ended up measuring out at 264 feet. So we've thrown down a couple of discs here to mark the landing zone. I'm up first. Ryan's got that firefly in his hand once again. Maybe. Maybe. Really good. Oh. <laughs> CTP, $1,100. He hit the lock. He hit the lock. Yeah, give it your best shot, boys. Zach's giving it a run, asking for it to heiser a little Ooh, bit. A little strong. He wasn't weak. He tried to give it a chance. So this he is. Knew, he knew he had to. He had to hit chain. Yeah, he had to hit something to get it to stick. This is a big downhill shot too. There's probably 20 feet in elevation change. What do you have here? I threw a force just because I felt. Ooh, what a run! And yeah. It was a good shot, but it did not stick closer than the doctor's firefly. I would say the doctor was uh, surgical in his uh, execution there. And Pete. Last chance at 1100. No. Didn't flip. And it stayed down the hill. And there you have it. $1,100 CTP at the end by Dr. Ryan Freibert. Take it away, Doc. Thank you all for watching the DeVue Park Disc Golf Course Grand Opening Exhibition. Shout out to today's film crew, including Michael Johnson, Brendan Nancy, and Chuck Pennock. Zach Arlinghouse takes down the course record, shooting a clean 12 under for 47 and four skins worth $400. Matthew Blakely coming in at nine under for 50, taking home three skins worth $300.
myself shooting a six under 53 and hitting a quite miraculous shot for $1,100. Pete Caldwell shooting five under 54 and a story to tell his children about. This project would not have been possible without the collaboration of the City of Covington leadership, Parks and Recreation, and Public Works. Many thanks to the Davout Park Advisory Committee for sharing our mission and vision of bringing disc golf to Davout Park. I hope you all enjoy the course and enjoy the footage. Feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns. Thanks so much.